seem like a one of those questions that seems like an oxymoron. It calls an oxymoron, or it's kind of contradictory. It's contradicting itself. But how can we have a good argument if that's even a thing? Well, the scripture says, "Be angry, but sin not." Sometimes we can have a disagreement or be angry with one another, but there is a way to express our anger, even if we just follow 1 Corinthians 13, even in the family, even in our relationships with one another. It's um, that, you know, operate in love, patience, kindness. We're not trying to seek our own, you know, our own point, our own opinion. Um, but even in James, when it talks about be swift to hear, so to speak, that when you're in times of disagreement or a difference of opinion, it's like, let me be quiet and hear what you're having to say and vice versa. You're not having that retaliatory listening that as soon as you close your mouth, I have something to say. Mm -hmm. It also says um, sometimes our, our words or arguments come on when it, we're at a point, it says it's like water. It's like turning on water. So we have to stop the contention before it even starts mm -hmm. or before it even gets to that place. And like you said, we're, we're, as a family, even as in relationship, couples, husband, wife, uh, man, woman, the thing is, even with uh, having a disagreement, you have to come to a thing. First of all, you got to know exactly what's going on. Is it really this issue or is it something else that's really going on? Is it the pot that stayed on too long on the stove or is it, you know, so we have to come to a point that we have to hit it where uh, it, it really is and get to, the, get to that point and knowing that it's not for us to continue to argue endlessly or whatever, but come to a point that we know that we have to compromise in some way, shape, or form. I'm not saying that, oh yeah, we're uh, right all the time, but the only right in that is for us to really come to an agreement. I feel this way. We will always disagree on some things, if you're human beings. There's no two people alike. So we will have disagreement. But I feel like this, if you're constantly going on and you're you know, screaming and carrying on, you irate and stuff like that. I've learned to shut up because a person can't argue by themselves. Mm -hmm. So if there's nobody to argue with, you'll soon shut up and it's over. Mm -hmm. That even if you feel that it's escalating, it's going to, it hasn't got there yet, but it will get there if you keep going that way, right. I learned to shut up. But it's not that you're ignoring the person. No, I, just don't, I let the person just talk until they finish talking. Mm -hmm. I know the scripture says to agree with your adversary. Directly. Right. And sometimes, even in the household, it, it, for an issue, it could almost seem like you're on adverse sides. Mm -hmm. But you just agree quickly. And when I think about that, I think we have to think what is the greater issue? Is winning the issue, okay, you were right about that, the prize? Mm -hmm. Or is having and maintaining a relationship? with one another, with a sister and brother, a mother, father. I mean, I've had time, I'm very close with my sister, but we've had times where we have just had downright arguments, especially when we were younger. But the greater thing is our relationship. So you can kind of let some things go when you value your connection. A lot of times, three little words, you know, calm the situation. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And that in a big way sometimes. We can't be too egotistical with each other. You know, there must be some calmness to an argument. Asking and giving uh, forgiveness. Never, like you said, not too prideful. And I think sometimes we want to hold on to that anger and um, lay with it. And thing. And even the scripture tells us that the sun shouldn't go down on our wrath.